Hey folks, this is Sebastian. In previous videos we've measured a lot of frequencies with our smartphones. In this little three-parter I want to give a few more examples and look into some of the little problems that we might encounter when looking at frequency spectrums. If we scroll through the videos on our channel, there have been quite a lot of experiments in which we determine the frequency. Like for example, the resonance frequency of a wine glass, the frequency of a pendulum or of a spring oscillator. But those are not the experiments I want to talk about in this series, because those are the ones that only give a single frequency. Instead, I want to look at the tools in FIFOX, which are called Audio Spectrum, Acceleration Spectrum and Magnetic Spectrum. Those, as the name suggests, give you an entire spectrum of frequencies, so you can see a whole range of frequencies at the same time. We've used them for example in our video where we're determining the speed of a fidget spinner or in our home lab challenge video where we look at the resonances when filling a glass with water. In principle all three do the same. They take a time signal of a sensor and calculate a spectrum from it using a mathematical technique called a Fourier transform. The audio spectrum uses the microphone, the acceleration spectrum uses the accelerometer and the magnetic spectrum uses the magnetometer. I will not discuss the math here, but we will look at a few examples and possible difficulties with this method. Let's start with the most common use for frequency spectrum. Audio. If we start the audio spectrum and create the tone, we will see its frequency in the spectrum. Here the frequency is how often the string of the guitar oscillates per second, which is measured in Hertz, which is just a fancy name for per second. This is also the frequency with which the pressure of the sound wave oscillates and it determines the pitch we hear. A high frequency is a high pitch tone and a low frequency is a low pitch tone. We can use this to tune the guitar and FIFOX also gives us the matching names for the musical notes. But if you look closely you will notice that the frequency makes rather coarse jumps when I tune the guitar string. That's because of the resolution of the frequency spectrum. So let's have a closer look at the spectrum. As you can see, we have a frequency axis that ranges from 0 Hz to around 24,000 Hz. And it looks like we have many data points in the spectrum. But if you zoom in and pick the difference between two points by selecting pick data and dragging between two points, you see that the difference is always 23.4 Hz. This is great relative accuracy for a 3500 Hz tone, but it is a 10% uncertainty when looking at a low 220 Hz tone. The spectrum is determined by two values. The sample rate is the frequency at which the sensor, in this case the microphone, measures. Pretty much every phone uses either 48,000 Hz or 44,100 Hz. So the microphone acquires 48,000 values per second. Half of that frequency is the maximum frequency that can be detected. And this is the 24,000 Hz at the upper end of the spectrum. If you want to learn more about this, you should search for Nyquist Shannon Sampling Theorem. The other value affecting the spectrum is the number of samples we take. As FIFOX tells us at the bottom, we are currently using 2048 samples. Half of this number is the number of data points in the spectrum. So our spectrum from 0 Hz to 24,000 Hz is divided into 1024 points, which have a distance of 23.4 Hz. While we cannot change the sample rate of the microphone, we can increase the number of data points used for the spectrum. At 32,768 points, we now have a spectral resolution of about 1.5 Hz. Much better to tune the guitar, but it comes at a price. Getting 32,000 samples takes more than half a second, so the spectrum is much less responsive. In fact, the spectral resolution is the inverse of the time it takes to record the data. If we want a resolution of 0.5 Hz, we would need to record for 2 seconds, regardless of the sensor or sample rate. Now you might have noticed another strange thing. We were recording a single tone, but we had several frequencies in our spectrum. But that's something we will discuss in the next video, when we will also have a look at the magnetic spectrum of the German railway and revisit the fidget spinner. If you want to learn more about our free and open source app FIFOX and learn more about the experiments you can do with it, visit fifox.org. Also, if you want to help us out in one way or another, visit fifox.org slash contribute where we set up a page with plenty of ways you can help us. Just check out the links in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next part of the series.